short introductory video showing how to use GDNT within Spatial Analyzer. I'm using the 2018 5-1 version of SA. Uh, to start, we're going to open up the toolkit. In order to open up the toolkit, if you don't see it on the right hand side, you're going to right click in this gray bar up here on the top of the screen and put a check next to your toolkit. So your toolkit pops up on the right hand side. The area that we're going to concentrate on for this video is the GDNT. So on this one, I didn't have any annotations that came in with the CAD. So we're going to define all of our datums as well as the annotations. So for starters, we'll make sure that CAD faces is checked since we're using, uh, using CAD and we'll define our datums. So we'll set up four datums here. I'll say datum A is the top surface. I'll say datum B is this back surface. I'll say datum C is defined by these two side surfaces. And I'll say datum D is this hole here. So I've got my, da my uh, datums defined, and now we can go into doing some of the, uh, the actual feature checks or annotations. We'll start with some simple ones first. Uh, we'll just put in a tolerance, um, and maybe we'll start with flatness. So if we want to know the flatness of a surface, we can hover over the flatness, left click on flatness, click the top surface, and we'll get a, flat, uh, a flatness uh, call out that you may be used to. Uh, we'll say maybe we want to do a perpendicularity. So maybe we want to know the back, how, how perpendicular this uh, back face is to this top face. So we'll say 5 thou relative to datum A, perpendicularity, click this, back, click this back surface. Maybe we want to do a surface profile. Again, we'll leave the 5 thou tolerance, but you can put in whatever you want. We'll click the surface profile and we'll click this top surface. Um, and then maybe we want to do, do some true positions. So we'll leave 5 thou in, we'll say what datums it's, uh, uh, are going to be referenced to, and we'll do a true position of this whole location relative to A, B, and C. You can see that annotation is created. And then maybe this back hole, we'll do something a little different. We'll say we want to do an at maximum material condition, and we'll say relative to A, B, and D. Uh, if you're using modifiers, material modifiers, you want to make sure that set nominal to CAD is checked and you'll have the diameter uh, tolerance, diametrical tolerance for that hole uh, typed in down here. So when we click on true position, we'll click on this hole. It'll ask if we want to build the corresponding di diameter annotation. We'll say yes. And it'll create both of those uh, annotations for the, uh, for the call out. So, these, uh, these annotations are not arranged all that nicely right now, so we can just right click on the annotations over here in our tree bar. We can say we want to drag those annotations and uh, get them looking nice for our report. Once we've got them dragged where we want to have it dragged, we'll, uh, we'll close this window, we'll save this view, and then maybe we'll take a picture of this for our report for later. So we'll click on make a picture. Uh, next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna create feature checks. Mm -hmm. So this is what you would get if the annotations were with the CAD. In our case, they weren't. So we'll make feature checks and you'll see the datums are grouped into one, uh, one item in the tree bar and the feature checks are grabbed in, are, are piled into another. Uh, so the next thing we would do is uh, maybe we'll get ready for our report. Uh, if we right click on feature checks, we can create inspection summary tables. Here we can group like things. So maybe I want to group my perpendicularity, perpendicularity, flatness, and surface profile. Say OK. This will create a new custom report table. And then maybe we want to group our, our uh, true position callouts. So we'll select our true position callouts. We'll say OK. So now I've got two custom report tables. I can get our report ready. So I can add my essay report, tell it that I want to bring the photo in uh, that we took for our report, and I can bring in my two custom report tables. They're not populated because we don't have any data associated with it yet, but this is a nice way of uh, formatting it for people to read downstream. With the data, uh, if I go to my inspection tab, I can see that I've got my task list for all the datums that I have to measure and for all the feature checks that I have to measure. 
Uh, if I had an instrument, I would just double click on the task that I want to start measuring on and, uh, and go ahead and, and uh, collect the data and associate it with the each line item in the task list. Since I don't have a, an instrument hooked up, I do have some points free, prefabricated. We'll, uh, we'll show these points and I'll just right click on each one of the datums and feature checks and tell it I want to associate points. I can click F2 and I can select all the points associated with datum A, datum B, associate points, again F2, datum B, okay, datum C, associate points, F2, okay, datum D, associate points, those are all the points in the big hole group, click OK. For the flatness, these are all the points in data A. Click OK. For the perpendicularity, associate points, these are the same points that are used for data B. We'll click OK. For the surface profile, we'll associate points. We'll do it a little differently this way. We'll actually select them by drawing a box around it. So holding the shift key, you can see the, the points turn color as they're selected. Um, we'll do that the same way on this hole down here. Multiple ways of selecting the points. So we'll say associate points. We'll grab all the points associated with this, uh, with this cylinder. Click OK. And for our last two checks, we'll right click, associate points. Grab the points and associate the data one last time. Now you can see over in our tree bar, our datums have points associated with it. Our feature checks have points associated with it. And all we have to do, we have to evalu evaluate the checks and we'll see everything become populated. So uh, now we've got, uh, we've got data in our, uh, in our view on our screen. If we go to our SA report and click on the report, we have got the picture that we had and now we've got uh, two nice feature check summary tables that show the status of the part as it is. This is a quick demonstration on how to use GD&T within SA.